suffering of sickness and illness. You need somebody to take care of you. So even after you become a whole person, there's still going to be tough things. You might come down with something, um, and you might become incapacitated. You want somebody that knows you, that cares about you, that will righteously tend to you and still buy you for that. That's another thing about this word. The last thing that marriage is for, when you're, even after you're a totally whole person, is death. Whether it's your mom dying, their dad dying, family members dying, or that person dying. The person, your wife, whether if she dies, the way that marriage is supposed to help you do that is your children. You can look at them and see her in them and still be connected to her energy. And if you really become spiritual, it does not matter that she dies. She's just not in the flesh no more. She's just not in the flesh no more. You know how to tune right back. You know how to stomach them. Because y'all was already, wait, you know what I mean? Y'all already been so, the two became one. So the flesh had nothing to do with that. You understand what I'm saying? So that's um, what marriage, and I found that in a, in a book called The Goddess Path. I'm a freelance writer, motivational speaker here in the city of Philadelphia. Uh, we don't ever want to forget our children when we do um, venues like this. We want to always remember the generation that's behind us that is going to take us into the future. 
whether it be a co cosmic, metaphysical, whatever you want to call it. So we want to remember our babies. I'm just a recent grandfather. I just had my first grandson. Yeah. Um, but um, we want to thank the Creator and the universe and our glorious ancestors who made it possible for us to be here today. Living, existing, struggling for a righteous cause. Um, we don't ever want to forget and remember and acknowledge our glorious ancestors who created everything this world has and is operating on. From A to Z, from Alpha to Omega, as they say. So um, I'm going to bring my mentor on, um, who is a master healer, um, who was taught by one of our great, great, great ancestors who happens to be locked down by the beast in America, one of many who are we, what we call political prisoners. We speak about Brother Mutulu Shakur, who was Tupac's stepfather. This is where Tupac Shakur gets his Shakur from. His step spiritual father, Mutulu, who is a master healer who was healing black people on a daily, hourly basis back in the 80s. Um, and his cost was, they gave him two, I believe it was 70 years for something that he didn't have anything to do. It was uh, another part of America's beastly, diabolical, conspiratorial plot and scheme against our great ones. It goes back to Noble Jew Ali, the Marcus Garvey, the Malcolm, uh, and the list goes on and on and on. So Matula Shakur is doing a 70 year sentence right now in, uh, I believe he's still at the Ad Max in Colorado. I got word some time ago that he'll be released, hopefully. We want to send out prayers for this brother. Um, recently, they said he will be released in uh, 2017, which would have mean that he would have done 30 years for something that he had, that he wasn't even there. They never produced not one iota piece of evidence, nothing. Um, so. We, want, we ask all of y'all to send out a prayer, a powerful supplication, whatever you call it, to the universe so that Matula can be back home with us in the very near future. Um, my name is Basil Shahid again. Um, I'm getting ready to take a, a, you know, a, uh, a much needed anti-violence, motivational, self-esteem, building program to the school district of Philadelphia uh, in the fall of September and um, y'all can say a prayer for me, send up 17 years, hopefully. Uh, thank you very much. But they need, they're going to need me more than I need them, me better y'all, because they're, it's a conspiracy, we all know this against our little ones now, they're not even really concerned about us anymore. Um, it's a conspiracy to destroy our young ones so that, they, that's like cutting us off at the root, um, like the birth control pill all over. Um, so I'm going to bring on my brother, Baba, Dr. Kokaya Patterson, um, who is going to give us some profound, resounding, cosmic, spiritual, esoteric, metaphysical, uh, universal, uh, galactarian, uh, you name it, he's going to come and give us some information and some knowledge, wisdom, and understanding an understanding that we need very much to take us into the future, which is now. So without any further ado, Master Healer, Baba Kokaya Patterson from Washington, D.C. Can we give him a world round? I tell you, family, everything he just got finished saying, I got to bring Sister Zola back up here with me. All that stuff he was just talking about, all of those spiritual things. Uh, that my brother was talking about. Thank you so much, uh, Brother Basil, for the lovely, lovely introduction. Um, wanting to again uh, thank uh, my sister Zola for the presentation, for the sharing of the information. I know I got me some notes that I'm taking back to DC and I'm putting them on my altar and see if I can get some things cleared up about this relationship. That, you know, so I really, really thank her. Uh, for that, some very, very profound points 
uh, that, uh, that she mentioned. I share, I share, I share. So, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. How's everybody? Beautiful. All right, let's make a little noise. How's everybody? Great. Okay, cool. Now we can move on. Great. All right, because we got to have a little juice going on here so that we can all work work with uh, one another. So I'm going to pass these out, take one of those and pass it on out to everybody and make sure everybody get one. If you ain't got one, I'll get you one. It's not a problem. We got enough to go back there. A couple more. There we go. There goes on there. Okay, and what I would like folk to do is to put your name in the center of that circle. I want you to put your name in the center of that circle. Okay? Put your name in the center of the circle. Let's give our sister one. Let's give our give Tyson one and give my sister Leslie one. <clears throat> and, you know, as a holistic practitioner, um, practicing holistic health, uh, acupuncture, diet, nutrition, Reiki, reflexology, massage, martial arts, you know, through the years, I'm 61 years old, I'll be 62, uh, coming up in April. Uh, at uh, age uh, 18, 17 and a half, I became a vegetarian. This is like 1971, 72, everybody thought that I was insane. Uh, at that point just to eat bread with lettuce and tomatoes on it because I didn't know nothing about no tofu, I didn't know nothing about what they call uh, healthy uh, food preparation, the, the uh, actual raw food uh, preparation uh, class that you went to, Sister Zola straightened me up because I said cooking, raw food <laughs> preparation uh, class uh, that my brother went to. Uh, it's important to recognize that those things weren't existing in our community back then. Uh, and so I was, uh, you know, looked at as somebody strange and different. And in 1977, 78, I put locks in my head, you know. So I'm one of the only people running around in D.C. at that, that time with locks in my head. So everybody thought I was dirty because they used to say people that got locked in dirty, you know, ooh, I, I, I. you know. So uh, to jump out there is not an issue for me. It's always been what we have to do. As my sister was saying earlier, we have to step out and address those issues that will stop us from moving forward. So at age 18, after being in the streets, using drugs and alcohol and dropping out from school in the eighth grade and not going back at all, <laughs> you know, until I was in my mid twenties. Uh, but at the same time, from that period up until then, working in the community, studying acupuncture, and doing all of those things that had to be done because it was about revolution and it's still about revolution, okay? And as we talk about revolution, we're going to pass the bucket around so if folk got a couple of pennies, a couple of dollars, uh, whatever the case may be, we want to make sure that we support this institution. Uh, Black and Nobel's bookstore and uh, we definitely want to thank Brother Tyson and, and Sister Leslie for all the great work that they're doing. When I first came to uh, the bookstore, I was impressed with the spirit and everything that's going on here uh, and made it my business to get back up here today uh, to do a presentation. And we will be coming back uh, doing more things in the community. So we, we thank uh, Black and Nobel for all the work that they're doing. Leslie gave me a little bit of history uh, about how the brother got started on the street corner and selling books and you know, and as, you know, we talk about tenacity and just continuing to do what we do, you know, built this institution for our community. So we really, really uh, are grateful uh, that uh, he was steadfast uh, in building this institution and making it work uh, for us. So, so one of the things that happens, um, as Sister Zola was talking about, people dealing with issues and dealing with emotional things, etc. These things have to be addressed and it doesn't matter which door you come in or which way you go at it and how you may approach it or whatever the case may be. We have to address uh, the things that exist in our community. So I'm one of the folks, uh, uh, I'm a proponent of going back uh, and looking at and dealing with whatever issues it is uh, that, you, that you've um, uh, been traumatized by or you know, that you've had problems with. I'm one of those persons who thinks that that's important. Uh, in working in uh, residential treatment for about 35 years. Um, no one in my 35, almost 40 years of running residential treatment programs, no one was successful that didn't go back and do that. In my 35, 40 years, 
no one was successful that didn't go back in some way, fashion, or form and address those things that had taken, past, taken place in the past. Because as my sister stated, they stick with you. You can do everything else. Become a vegetarian, you do this, you get into singing and the yoga, like she said, Tai Chi and meditation. And you can even go to anger management. You can do all of those therapeutic things. But if you don't consciously address, because people sit in anger management and they talk, but they don't consciously address it because of the fear of the pain and again going through the suffering of experiencing that same emotion uh, or hurt uh, or dis-ease uh, as a result of what it may, may have taken place. And that's where that will comes in that she's talking about. You don't have that will, that root chakra, you know, is where all of that center that, you know, you talk about the reproduction. So if that will is not there, you know, it ain't gonna happen because that will you're talking about again as she stated that brain which again we're talking spirit when we talk about the mind we're talking spirit because before they started using the word psychology and psychiatry it was what's wrong with that person's spirit it was always that until they came up with that word it's not a word that we came up with Africans didn't come up with that word but that word they used to disassociate you know the process from the spiritual connection but as African people, we know that there's no way that you can do that. So with your name right there in that circle, the first thing we have to do is recognize how do we address these problems that we may have in our community. They have to be addressed from what's called a holistic perspective. Now, when y'all look at that paper, you can clearly see this word holy in there, and you can clearly see the word whole in there. Okay, you see a little definition how that word is broken down. So when we see this word holy, okay, most of the time we see the word holistic, okay? And when we see this word holy in there, we're always talking about something serene, something God-induced, something spiritually based, you know, et cetera, when we talk about that word holistic. But if we don't put the W in it, then we leave out, most times, the community and the environment. We usually leave this out when we talk about dealing with a health issue, whatever that health issue might be. We usually leave out community environment. Give an example. High blood pressure. Diabetes. HIV and AIDS. Uh, asthma. Okay, so High blood pressure. Dr. Kakai is dealing with high blood pressure. So we say, okay, Baba, in terms of your body, in terms of your body, what are you doing? We talk about the diet, what they should be eating, you know, da 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 da. In terms of your mind, what are you doing? You know, okay, you know, I'm strengthening, educating myself, strengthening my mind. In terms of your spirit, what are you doing? I'm doing the meditation and yoga, like Sister was saying earlier. But I got this high blood pressure, my spirit is calm, my mind is clear and strong, I'm eating all the right food, so my blood pressure is going to go down. But I go home and I ain't got one of them wives that we be talking about. I got the opposite. I got somebody who's going to be raising hell when I come in the house. My blood pressure is going to go back up even though I've done all of these things right here. Y'all with me? Y'all follow? Okay. So diabetes, same thing. Okay, I can do all of this, but when I go home, I got cakes, cookies, ice cream, Uncle Ben's white rice, oodles and noodles, you know, some white bread. You know, I got all of the stuff that's going to turn into sugar and process into sugar and then turn into acid and wrap my body up. Okay, so my environment in my ice box, in my cabinet, I need to have agave now. You know, as opposed to for my sweetener. I don't need no maple syrup. I don't need no turbinado sugar. I don't need no honey. You know, I need agave nectar, you know, as we move and take it to the optimal level. Okay, because when I stop eating meats and all those other kinds of things, the only thing I, I used was honey throughout the years. Beet propolis and, you know, different kinds of things. But as time went on, you get exposed to stuff. Stuff trickles down into the black community. And that's the problem that we have. You know, stuff trickling down you know, into the black community. So agave nectar would be in my environment, it'd be up in my cabinet. 
Himalayan sea salt would be in my cabinet, not the little girl with the umbrella. Miss Morton, no, 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 no. We don't want none of that salt, you know, because I ain't gonna do nothing but dry you up, dry up your arteries, etc. With straight up sodium, ain't no minerals in it, you know, whatsoever, you know. So we look at HIV and AIDS, you know, and when we talk about HIV and AIDS, we talk about a virus, okay? Let me do it like this. Let's just talk about this HIV for a minute before we go. So we look at HIV as a virus. And a virus is something, you know, that's alive. It's a live living organism. And if it's a live living organism, it gotta eat. Okay, and what do it eat? It eat up the blood cells and all that other stuff, okay? So let's say this Pac-Man is the HIV virus. And you know in the game, as it's moving through and you eat them balls, it get bigger and bigger. You ever seen that Pac-Man game? It get bigger and bigger as it's eating the balls. <clears throat> so what happens when the virus is running through the body and it's beginning to uh, eat up the red and white blood cells and spread the virus all over the body, it gets stronger, you know, in that sense. So, you got your cells right here. Now this area in that cell is where the food is. It's mucophage in here, it's mucoid matter that's in here, it's where the food is. So the virus is sniffing that. Do I want that? Okay, now, here you have a brother over here that's eating pork chops, that's eating little chitlins, that go to uh, Crack Donald's and go to Murder King and roll over the Taco Hells and go to Wind Disease and KFC killing families and children. So they going to all of them places, so what's inside of they cells is that. They drinking a Hawaiian punch, they eating honey nut Cheerios and sugar graham crackers, cereal, whatever that stuff is, the kids. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> you know, rice puff crispies and all this stuff with everything with color in it. The pebble jumps. It's like, it looked like the rainbow, man. That cereal looked like the rainbow, man. It looks like a fancy rug if you pour it on the floor. <laughs> yeah, Fruit Loops and all of that. So the virus, this brother right here, then you got Dr. Kakai, in his cells, we got veggies, we got fruits, we got vitamins, we got herbs, we got uh, alkaline water, you know, we got, we doing some acupuncture, we got some exercise. So my cell ain't got no garbage in it. Because a virus only wants to eat garbage. Garbage, that's it. See, they don't tell the people about this when, you know, when they deal with this HIV stuff. So as it eats this cell, it gets bigger. It's going to come to this one and like, I can't eat that. It's going to go back away. So if all of our cells are like this one, what's going to happen to this chump up here? He's going to starve. If you starve, what you do? You die. <laughs> You see, so the viral load begins to come down. So they can actually check that viral load for an individual and see how much of the virus is concentrated in their body. So this is what uh, uh, happens in that process. So let's look at that in terms of the holistic process, right? So with the holistic process, this individual has the HIV virus. Now, most people think that the virus is a life and death piece. You know, I'm going to die. You know, so again, this depression and this mental state that she's talking about, this person is carrying this with them every day. I can go up to them and say, you fine. Yeah, right. You know, because they haven't gotten to what she's talking about. They haven't resolved, you know, the things that have gotten them to that point. I Meaning they have to go back and look at that issue and see what happened. Was it a sexual encounter? Was it drugs? You know, what was it? You know, was fusion there? What's going on? You got to look at that. You got to address it and deal with that so you're able to address that issue. So an individual who has HIV, we got to work on their spirit for sure. They need counseling, they need meditation, you know, they need some companionship in terms of helping them and nursing them through this process. You know, they need information. I just got finished talking about the virus and what it is. If those individuals had that information, they would know not to eat honey buns. They would know not to eat the cupcakes. They would know, you know, not to eat the cookies and the ice cream and the this and the that and, 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 and the sweet yogurt. You know, what about yogurt, Baba? No, <laughs> no, it's got 10 pounds of sugar and syrup and you know, all these other things and you go to the health food store and you can get um, acidophilus, you know, yogurt, you know, and it's great for women in terms of yeast infections and things of that nature. It really helps to clear that up. You have some sisters just eat a little bit once a month, you know, just to keep that down. And the yeast infection, of course, comes from the bread and 
the rice and you know all gain all of those things that turn into sugar in the body so we know we work that middle piece and then we work the body and we talk about what they should be eating you know what kinds of things they can do to build their immune system in 1990 yeah 1990 uh, I was working with a clinic in Washington, D.C. called Green Cross Acumen Clinic. We developed a protocol that we took to, I think it was the second or the third uh, international conference on HIV and AIDS. And we sent the protocol over there. And the protocol was uh, actual acupuncture points that we could needle that in needling these points would develop red and white blood cells. This is incredible. I can put a needle in somebody and we can generate red and white blood cells. Well, where do those red and white blood cells come from? They come out the bones. They come out the marrow of the bones. You know, so again, when we talk about that root chakra, we got to strengthen that root chakra because the kidneys are down there. And the kidneys deal with bones and hair and growth and development and will and fear, the opposite. So what she was saying, very, very clear you know, in terms of how that operates, how this whole area down here operates. You don't take care of that, you're in trouble. You're just working this up here, and you're, <laughs> you're in trouble, you know. Some things are gonna happen. So, with that HIV, and, and uh, so we work the body, we work the spirit, we work the mind, and in the environment, we still have promiscuity. So there can be a reinfection, or it can be a passing on uh, of the infection. Let's talk about asthma. Spiritually, something's going on with that individual. When you talk about asthma, you're talking about the lungs. And the lungs deal with sadness. The lungs deal with grief and loss. Okay? That's the lungs. But what do you mean, Doc? Uh, one of my best friends passed. <gasps> oh, we got. We're going to. Come up here. You know, you see people in the church. Oh, get them on, let them breathe. <laughs> you know, you kind of get choked up. Because your, your breathing is like the breath of life, and here we talk about death, and we associate that with breath of life or not, you know, kind of thing. So again, it's a whole mental psychological piece that's going on. But the lungs deal with grief and sadness and loss. In D.C., we're number one in the country with respiratory problems in Washington, D.C., number one. Well, what does that mean? Well, we got two things going on. Environmental. D.C. is up here. I'm sorry. The water is up here and DC's down here. Yeah, yeah, DC's below the water in DC, so we're surrounded by water, the anaclasty and so forth. So all this humidity is coming up over the city and all of the toxins are coming up and being trapped in the air. That's one thing environmentally, okay? Spiritually and physically, most of the young people in DC ain't got no mama or ain't got no daddy. Y'all know that's how it is in the black community in a lot of situations. Even one of the parents are not there. Separation anxiety is a big, big issue in our community. So separation anxiety is a loss. Young girls are sad when their daddy ain't around. Young boys are sad when their mama ain't around. So we got a lot of that concentrated in Washington, D.C. So now we got the environmental piece, we got the spiritual piece, we got the physical piece, meaning that they're eating junk food every day. They're eating things that's going to clog up their lungs and throw their balance off, okay? And that major thing that they're doing, of course, is sugar, okay? We're going to talk about that in a minute. So, holistically speaking, we have to look at everything that we're doing from a holistic perspective. Our business, our relationships, our family, you know, our work, whatever it is that we do, if we use this, then we're good. In Chancellor Williams' book, Destruction of African Civilization, he has in there what's called the African Constitution. The African Constitution basically talks about what it is that we should and should not do and what we can and cannot do, similar to those 42 principles of Maya that she was talking about. And the key to that is that she said that this is something uh, that uh, I will not do, I will not harm, I will not do this, I will not do this. But the most profound part of that statement that she made is that after the day is over, you can say, I did not. So that's the closeout. That's African. It's no separation from beginning to the end, and you connect them up. But in American society, like she said, that's not how we do it. You know, matter of fact, we mess up all week, go to church on Sunday and get forgiven. We ain't got to work on nothing. We go say about four or five Hail Murrays, a couple of them uh, 
uh, our father jumps, you know what I'm saying, light a few candles, we can go on back out and do the same thing again. You know, because so, so my main man died for us. He died for our sins, so we can go and do some more sinning, because if it didn't, no, it don't work like that. Yeah. That's, that's the wrong thing. We talk about Genesis in the Bible. I don't know if I spelled it Genesis. Did I spell that right? Maybe I didn't. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I'll put a B up here for Bible, okay? <laughs> okay, in the Bible. Okay, so in Genesis it says very, very clearly, I give you the, uh, uh, the vine that bears the fruit with the seed that you shall have as your what, family? It says meat. See, right now I'm just clearing up, con I'm just clearing up concepts in terms of how we need to look and how we approach, whether it's a mental issue, emotional issue, physical issue, communal issue, family issue, if we don't use that circle, something's going to get left out. Listen, financial problems. Same thing. You know, what's, what's, what's the spirit about it? You might have somebody in the family think money is the root of all evil. Sister mapped it out very, very clear. That's why it's so easy for me to say it. <laughs> money is the root of all evil. She's talking about saying everybody, when they sit down and pray, it used to be everybody was on the same tip. Now everybody on a different kind of tip. You know, because that whole concept of separatism and dichotomyism is here in America. You know what I'm saying? So we got to look at that. So the meat, it clearly states, I give you the vine that bears the fruit that you should have as your meat. And some people may not agree with that. And when we look at this word right here, the word has to do with dealing with substance. Has to do with dealing with substance. I say to my brother, that's a gray and... Then my brother will say, no, that's army gray. And, and then uh, Sister Zola will step in and say, wait a minute, let's clear that up and let's get down to the meat of the situation. Now we understand the importance you know, of the conversation and what we're dealing with. We get rid of all the nonsense and we go to the meat. In Leviticus, let me put another B up here in case I spelled that wrong, that being Bible. <laughs> in Leviticus, it talks about what we should eat. It defines the kind of fish that we should eat. It defines the kinds of meats that we should eat. All through the Bible, herbs are mentioned two to three thousand times. Olive leaf, peppermint, I mean, you know, and, and they're talking about all in the foods and, you know, the incenses, you know, all these are herbs, frankincense and myrrh, you know, you can use those for healing, you know. If, if in fact, the creator picked three things that they gave the baby Jesus in all of the world and all of the universe. They picked three things. As a kid, I was like, why did they pick gold and silver? Why did they pick frankincense and miracles? I'm thinking, oh, they should have gave him a, a donkey or something to ride around in, a car. Because my man was walking all through the desert. They gave him a, a bag with some water in it. I was thinking all kind of stuff as a kid. You know, you know. But well, why is it that these three cats came from around the world and the cats had gold and silver, frankincense and myrrh. So I said, it's got to be something about that frankincense and myrrh. So I grew up not knowing. And then when I found out I could get it, I didn't believe it because I thought it was something <coughs> special for Jesus. I said, the only time I heard about it, we can get this in a store? I said, you lying. Because I'm thinking this is something you cannot get. And frankincense and myrrh, the reason why, and this is just my perspective or my take on it, the reason why that was given to him because of what it can do spiritually, mentally, physically, and communally. So we like that frankincense and spiritually it cleans all the negative energy out of your house, out of your environment. I burns it like a smoke cloud in my house. People come in gagging. <laughs> you know, I say, oh, thank you for letting me know. You know, so we know what's happening, that the lungs are all messed up, etc. So that frankincense works on that. With the mind, you know, you burn in frankincense and the, the nice fragrances and, you know, how it's making you feel mentally and it calms the spirit down, etc. With your body, frankincense can be used to break down mucus and stuff in the lungs. It's antibiotic, antiseptic, antifungal. You know, in the community, when I like frankincense, people be coming to my mouth, I smell your house around the corner. So what is it doing to the neighborhood? Without me even going out, you know, and without me even seeing the person who walks by, breathing in, I've never seen them in my life, but they got that frankincense in their body. So this is how important this is, again, when we talk about 
that holistic circle. So again, these are just some of the concepts. Jesus was a vegetarian, huh? That's what they say. That's what I say. I keep asking people, can you tell me where he ate meat? And they keep talking, pulling the fish thing out the bag. Well, you know, he fed the masses. I said, he fed the masses. He fed, you know, because the Bible is so correct. You know, he fed the masses that fish, you know what I'm saying? But at the Last Supper, he had this big table with fruits and veggies, and I didn't see no big chicken sitting up in front of him, you know, doing that piece like that. So it's important that we recognize what we're dealing with. So let's talk a little bit about sugar. We're just going to jump around a little bit here. Talk a little bit about sugar. And, and when we talk about sugar, <clears throat> you know, we're talking about this, this white powder here. And we're talking about an empty carbohydrate. And we're talking about it being in everything. McDonald's sprinkles it on the salads. <laughs> they sprinkle it on the french fries. You know, it's incredible. You know, you know it's incredible. They sprinkle it on your fries, for those of us who eat that stuff. You know, and that McDonald's french fry, you lose it in the car, and you go back and find it two months later, and look just like it looked when it came out of the fridge. <laughs> you find that thing stuck down in the back seat of the car somewhere, and you pull it out, and it looks just like it did when it came out of the grill. So, this sugar thing, huh? Break it down. Break it down, yeah. Because it ain't going to break down in your body. It's not going to break down in your body. And this sugar is very, very detrimental uh, to your body in terms of what it can do. Let's, start, let's take a, a quick little journey. You wake up in the morning, you brush your teeth. If you're not using Pilu or if you're not using Tom's or whatever you're using your regular toothpaste, you're brushing your teeth with sugar. And then if you uh, use some mouthwash, you know, the red or green or the, the pink one or the sweet, the blue one, and you know, and they're sweet. They got sweetener in them. You know, we don't even know what kind of sweetener uh, is in there. So we got a nice little concentrated teaspoon of sugar from all of that stuff. And we go to the breakfast table and we eat a sugar cereal. We eat some, uh, we drink some juice. And of course, my clients tell me, well, I'm drinking uh, um, Ocean Spray. Yeah, I, I do Tropicana. You know, I said, okay, a little less sugar, but it's, you know, piled up with sugar. Uh, these particular uh, uh, fruit drinks, Tropicana and Ocean Spray and some of those name brands. Sunny D, Sunny Death, you know, Sunny Death, no light. You know, ain't no light with Sunny D. You know, that's like drinking uh, transmission fluid. If anybody's ever tasted it or, or seen the, 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 the constitution of it, if you pour it, it's like thick. It comes out, you, you know, it looks like, it looks like tram, transmission fluid. And, and then if you disgusting. taste it, huh? I said, and it's just disgusting all oh, together. All together. <laughs> yeah, and then when you read the label, it's like, it's like 500 things that labeled like this big. And you're like, you can't recognize nothing that's, that's in that juice. You know, so it's important for us to understand what this sugar is all about. So, with the sugar, with the sugar, I don't know. With the sugar, I want to do a little little muscle test with the sugar. Let me get a volunteer. Somebody come up here. Let me get a volunteer. Somebody come up here. Like <laughs> come on, Bob. I like sugar. Oh, you like sugar. I definitely want you to come up. Come on. No, no, they like sugar. They definitely want them to come up. Got them now. Got them now. Got them now. Got the muscles and everything going on. All right, we want a strong black man here. All right, stick that arm out like this here. All right, now I'm going to press down on it. All right? Uh oh, you got, you got sugar in his mouth. Take that gum out. It's, I'm telling you, it's going to mess with what I'm doing. I'm telling y'all, you got to take that gum out. We, we, I'm serious. You got something with a stick on? Who got a piece of paper? <laughs> y'all know the little chewing gum piece of paper. Come on, y'all. You understand know, a little piece of paper off and just wrap the chewing gum up in it? He got it. Oh, you got it straight? Got it. All right, I'll be ready to tear a little piece off. All right, then we're going to set that. Oh, yeah, you got good wild sugar right there. You got the whole pack of gum. <laughs> you know, like I used to die. Boom, boom, boom. have a big old gob of bubble gum up in there. You used to be able to save it. I don't think you're going to mess with that. <laughs> he got more at home, so we see if we can get him to divert away from it, okay? So I'm going to press down on your arm, and I want you to stop me from pressing down on your arm, okay? All right. Everybody see that? Okay, now, what we're going to do is we're going to set him up. And I ain't even going to use no big thing. I'm going to just use a little pack of sugar. We're going to show you how this throws this whole energy field, as my sister talks about, off. Okay? So we're going to put that in this hand. We're going to raise the arm up again. Okay, now y'all know them strong, right? Now, 
no problem, man. But whatever I want to do, I can do it. See, look at it. Look at it. See, now he's trying to hold it. He couldn't. He tried. <laughs> that joke just, he it just broke on down. You see what I'm saying? Let's do it one more time. Let's hold this out. Okay, but we want to also do it. Okay. I'm going to put this in his hand. Now, he's going to try to stop me like he did, but he ain't going to be able to maintain it. It's going to go down. He's going to can't handle it. That changes the whole energy in your body. One other thing. Where's your cell phone? Okay, let's do the cell phone. We're gonna do the cell phone. Okay, let's go out again. Okay, we already know he's strong, he can hold it. We're gonna put the cell phone with the radiation that messes with all of the chakras and all of the energy centers and spiritual centers in the body. We're gonna put this in his hand over here. Oh, I don't have to pay no phone Okay, all right, now, that radiation coming from that is enough to throw his body feel off and to throw his chakras out of line and everything else, right? Again, go straight down. Isn't that something? Take the phone out. And it's his phone. I didn't use mine because people are like, that's your phone, Kakai. You put something on it. No, I ain't do that. Okay, so we got him here. Put that in there. Isn't that something, Mama? That's more. It makes more. Bang. Okay, we know that it's working on the stuff. Okay, you know how sometimes you get this little hip pain. I don't know if it, and some of y'all might feel it. Sometimes you get a little hip pain, and then it dissipates. That radiation then coagulated a little bit right there. Because you've been wearing it. Because sometimes I have my phone in one spot. I don't usually have my phone there. I feel a little. You ever feel a little something? Like a little vibration yeah. on you? Wherever that phone was, that's where that stuff be kicking it. Because it be inside of your system. That's the energy. So it goes on and it will attract itself to other energies, just like negative and positive energy, you know, running with one another. So sugar, we can see, is very, very detrimental. And anything that will throw off this energy field that my sister works with ongoingly, it can do that. The emotional self can do that very easily. We don't look at it like that in terms of muscle testing. But if I'm up here and I'm like so and so and so and I get mad, run, do I get? I'm off. I'm off. So constantly our body is going in and out of balance every day. The, the most vegetarianous person in the world, same thing, it doesn't matter. Me, Zola, Basile, you know, whomever. If you're into health, you're going to be going off and on in terms of your balance every day. So the key is, as she stated, balance. You know, which means that we have to work the spirit, <laughs> the mind, the body, and our environment. We got to do that. If we don't do that, then something's going to be left out. Dr. Kai is not going to get everything that he needs in order to make the changes and the adjustments, you know, in our lives. Okay, let's take a look at the sugar thing in terms of a day. If I had, uh, anybody got a spoon? I need a teaspoon. I had one. I don't know what I did with it. But I was going to show you all how much sugar. Uh, individuals will use in the course of a day. But still, could you see if they got a teaspoon or something back there? Because I want to show you all how much you sugar. An empty bottle cap right there? An empty bottle cap? Yeah. You think that's a teaspoon? Yeah. <laughs> round about, round about. But nonetheless, you know, by the, by, the, by the midday or the end of the day, a person would have used this much sugar. You know, so that bubble gum right there, Within that bubble gum, you maybe have just that wad right there, concentrated two, three teaspoons of sugar. Easy. Because how big it is, and how, you know when you're chewing, bubble gum is kind of crunchy because of the sugar that's in it. You know, that's concentrated, like a Tic Tac. That's a teaspoon of sugar. Concentrated. That, all of that had that power in that little teeny thing. It's concentrated. They fuse that thing together, just like your bones. You know, how your bones get hard because of all the minerals and stuff and the vibration fuses them together and makes them hard because we do have copper and metal and zinc and you know some real heavy material but it has to be fused so it can solidify you know in the body and that's how that body operates and if the spiritual vibration is off that fusion is going to be off in any and everything that we do but we're still walking around like everything's all right everything's still fine though you know we're still doing our sugars and you know, doing whatever we're doing. We go through our angers and go through our emotions and so forth. We get up and we just roll right through it every day. I'm right where Sister Zoli is, and I think that the emotional and mental and psychological issues are at the base of everything that we deal with. 
is at the base of everything. So if you don't do that work, so as an acupuncture, that's what people always want me to talk about, but I usually never do until the end, you know, of the presentation, because they have to understand this more so than understanding acupuncture, because we know acupuncture works. 5,000 years old, the oldest uh, medicine on the planet. It started in Africa. There's actual acupuncture needles on the walls in the pyramids. Gold needles and so forth. I got gold needles and silver needles. They have platinum needles. And all these metals, as my sister knows, with crystals and metals, they have certain energies. You know, you got to know how to apply uh, those concepts, you know, when you're doing that acupuncture process. So the energy process is important for us to recognize that instead of uh, how people say, well, what's holistic? And they say body, mind, spirit. And they always put the spirit last. And the spirit should always be up on the top. Always up on the top. But they always say, oh, you, what's holistic? Body, mind, spirit. So here they go with that physical piece. And that's how society does. They want us to focus on the physical. You know, if we focus on the physical, we'll never get to this as she was saying, who we really, really are. And we really are spiritual beings, as she stated again, living a physical experience, living through a physical uh, experience. So it's important that we recognize, again, what this process is all about. So we can't find no teaspoon, but nonetheless, just going through it, you got one teaspoon coming out of the bathroom, you sit down at the breakfast table, you eat your cereal, and normally they're sweet honey nut, sugar frosted, Cinnamon Toast Crunch, da da da. You can add another five teaspoons of sugar to that. Now we had six. And we haven't had our Sunny D. We haven't had our Ocean Spray. We haven't had, you know, the specific things. The specific things that, uh, and the specific things that, uh, Okay. All right, you got one by Sia? Yes, sir. In the back, in the back, back there, by the bathroom. All this is on the video, y'all be clear. <laughs> we work in a piece. So, uh, so with the sugar again, uh, it's important to recognize that the things that sugar does to our body. There's a, uh, <clears throat> There's a book called uh, The Children's Health Book by Ron Seaborn. Uh, and Ron Seaborn has a depiction of uh, different uh, monsters. This is the sugar demon. This, this be the sugar demon. And this is a big white ball with sugar cane horns. The sugar demon. Thank you so much. And the sugar demon is wanted dead, not alive. <laughs> it's a dead or alive. So, we put one teaspoon of sugar in there for uh, the bathroom, toothbrush, toothpaste, uh, and uh, mouthwash. Then we go to the breakfast table and we eat some cereal. So, we got one in there, so we're going to add two, three, four, five. Now we have six teaspoons in here. Now we're going to drink some Sunny D or some Ocean Spray or some Tropicana. And we're going to be nice. We're just going, how many we got now? Six, right? Six. We're going to add three. We're being nice, though. We just added three, but we're being nice. Now we got nine. Two, three. Okay. Then we usually will have a, a bran muffin or a, a donut or, you know, I'm talking about the adults. We ain't even talking about the children. Okay, we're talking about the adults. We have a little honey, honey bun or, you know, something like that. So we get about, let's say three. Be nice. We'll be nice. We'll put three more. Now we have 10, 11, 12. Do we have a self cup of coffee, maybe? Yeah. A cup of coffee? There we go. Yeah. Not us. I mean, you know. Yeah. You know, I do, yeah. yeah. You know, okay. So we're going to add, on average, at least four teaspoons of sugar. I mean, coffee drink. Right you know, so we have what? 9, 10, 11, 12. We're 12, 13. 14. And we've been nice. 15. Just add three. That's it. So we have this much sugar in this container. We haven't even got the lunch. We didn't get to the Kit Kat or the Reese's or the 
Blubble, blubble. Blubble, blubble. We ain't getting to that. Really? I would have been three cups and then passed it. You've been three cups out. He, he, that's the truth, though. So you think about the children. This is, you know, the children, um, sugar frosted flakes. You know, honey, honey loops, pops with dye on them, red dye, yellow dye, green dye, all of that. And that's all in this right here. So, on average, you know, your body is only supposed to break down five to nine teaspoons of sugar a day. That was just breakfast. They had to do nothing with lunch. Because we didn't say nothing about a soda, did we? Because a soda, you're going to throw 10 in off the bat. Unless you're drinking two liters. Unless you're drinking two liters, then you put just a whole bag of sugar. Just get a bag of sugar and just, you know, you know. And clearly, when you talk about a liter, you're talking about 35 to 50, no exaggeration, teaspoons of sugar. At a minimum, 35. I'm talking about a liter. At a minimum, 35, 250, depending on the kind of soda it is. You know, Mountain Dew, man, Mountain Dew got like 13 teaspoons of sugar in it. Uh, Minute Maid lemon soda, the lemon juice soda yeah. thing, Minute Maid, same thing. I mean, just tons and tons of sugar in it. Chocolate milk, please. You know, not with the mucus. Dr. Pepper, yeah, it pepping you up. He's a doctor already. He's doctoring you right on down with the Dr. Pepper. So we have to look out for that sugar demon. We have to look out for the meat monster, okay? The meat monster, here we go. Red meat. People say, well, Doc, I stopped eating pork. Amen, hallelujah, Domino and Nabisco. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, uh, well, I'm giving up the red meat. But I tell you, you know, I still eat a little chicken. Still eat a little fish now. Got that, you know, black folk and chicken, we got a relationship with chicken. And fishes. You got a relationship with chickens and fishes. Red meat. One ounce of red meat, you get 76 grams of fat. One ounce of white meat, you get 72 grams of fat. No difference. Either you want to shoot yourself or you get run over by a car. Which one you want to do, you know, in terms of, um, you know, your health and what you're dealing with. So meat is a very, very dangerous thing and it creates all kinds of problems. The starch creature. Now, starch creature, oodles and noodles, Uncle Ben's white rice, elbow macaroni, <laughs> you know, all of those starches will turn into sugar and produce acid, you know, in the body. That's the starch creature. Then we have the very famous dairy goon. The dairy goon, of course, we're talking about dairy products that create mucus uh, in the body, etc. So these are some of the uh, folks that we have to deal with, and what they do is they create mucus. So here we have the mucus destroyer, and we know that mucus will destroy the body and break the body down and clog the body totally up in that process, okay? But one of the things that we want to do is work around that. And we have to ask ourselves three questions. We have to ask ourselves three questions about whatever it is that we're doing. The first question says very clearly, number one, uh, is the food giving energy? We know that Fruit Loops don't do that. We know that Sugar Frosted Flakes don't do that. We know that that red meat, the pork chops and chitlins don't do that. So when you're eating something, the question is, is this food gonna give me energy? If it's not gonna give you energy, you shouldn't be eating. Sugar is not gonna give you energy. It's gonna give you a false sense of energy. You get a surge, you know, you get that rust, but then you, you crash as a result of that. Say that again. It's good for for parenting, if you want the kid to take a nap, he says it's good for parenting. So would you fill them up with sugar and then let them depress after that? They just crash. Okay. So we got to deal with all the sugar that's in their body. Don't use that formula. That's not a good formula, y'all. Don't, don't go there. Don't go there. Bananas will do it. It'll slow them down. Knock them right out. Thank you, sir. That's that potassium up in there. Okay. So 
The second question, you say, you ain't going with bananas, right? They <laughs> okay. The second question is, um, is this food going to help build my body back up? So if your body's broken down, and you're going through changes, what kind of food do you eat to build your body back up? See what I'm saying? The third one is, is this food going to help <coughs> heal any problems that I have? So if I have high blood pressure, diabetes, HIV and AIDS, asthma, carpal tunnel syndrome, uh, migraine headaches, PMS, you know, whatever the case may be. Is this food I'm going to eat going to help heal that imbalance in my body? These are the three major questions that you'd ask yourself. And if you answer, is this food going to give me energy? If it does, then you eat it. Is this food going to help build my body back up? If it does, then you eat it. Is this food going to help heal any of the health conditions and problems that I have? If it does, then you eat that food. It's important that we eat that food. So these are the major three questions because the three reasons why we have many, many of the problems that we have, one is dehydration. Malnutrition. And sleep deprivation. Okay? Dehydration, water. We're not drinking the kind of water or we're not drinking enough water and most definitely we're not drinking the kind of water that we should be consuming. And let me just talk about that for a hot second. When we talk about how water works and how um, the body uh, can't survive without it. We have to have that water. So the water has many, many components. One, it's a component of the digestive juices or the gastric juices, meaning you don't drink the water when you're eating. The water has to be in your body so it's a part of the cells. So when it's time for the body to react, it can react properly because the water in the body is hydrated so it can do what it's supposed to do as a part of the uh, uh, gastric juices and transporting nutrients through the digestive tract. It's a part of the absorption process. So if you're drinking water, you have to be able to absorb the nutrients and the vitamins into the cells. It's a part of the elimination process where your elimination has to be consistent in terms of the body doing naturally what it does in terms of eliminating things. It's part of circulation and moving things through the body. It's part of temperature control. You know, you have some people are hot, some people are cold. So water helps to deal with temperature regulation. Also, lubrication. You got people's knees popping and joints cracking and you know so forth because they're not drinking the kind of water that they need and the bones are primarily water. So we need that water in the body. So dehydration becomes an issue because we're drinking Deer Park, we're drinking Great Bear, and when we're drinking those waters, the molecule is that big. Your cell is this big. That molecule cannot fit in that cell. This is where that alkaline water concept comes from. Everybody's drinking alkaline water now because we know that with alkaline water, the molecule is this big. It can get inside the cell and make sure that the cell does all of those things. So therefore, we got to drink real water, Blue Delta, Iceland, Fiji. We have to drink all of those alkaline waters because our body internally has to have an alkaline environment for those foods to digest properly and the enzymes and the gastric juices are settled to be able to do their work properly. But because if there's acid in there, then they can't function properly because that stuff is being eaten up and the body cannot work properly. So dehydration is a major thing. For every 20 pounds, eight ounces of water. For every 20 pounds. So if I weigh 100 pounds, I'm drinking five glasses of water. Okay, that's an easy way to do it. For every 20 pounds, a glass of water. Okay? All right, that's important. So that dehydration. So the next thing is malnutrition. We eat, but we eat the wrong stuff. So we get nutrition, but we don't get quality nutrition. Okay? So the malnutrition 
has to do with the quality of the food that we're eating. As well as when we talk about water, and see again, the interconnection and interrelationship of all things. When we talk about this malnutrition, it has a lot to do with this water too. Because remember, one of the functions is to take the nutrients through the body. You might be eating some healthy food, but you're not drinking the right water. So just remember, everything is, you know, I don't want to use this word, but I'm going to use it. Everything is meticulous. We, you know, you got to get down to the real nitty gritty, and we got to go optimal. You know, so we might do something around drinking water, but the kind of water that we drink might be wrong. You see, so we got to be very, very clear about that process. So remember, 20 pounds, eight ounces of water. Okay, and we want to drink alkaline water. That pH balance, seven point on up to nine point. Okay, 9.0, 7.0 on up to 9.0. You can read that on the bottle. Most people are familiar with Fiji, real water, Blue Delta, Iceland, I don't know what other waters are up here. Uh, but as for pH water or alkaline water, when you go into the health food stores, y'all got whole foods up here, right? Yeah, whole foods. You know, so yeah, you can go in there and do that. Okay. Um, so filtered water is bad? Filtered water is just that, you just answered it, filtered water. So that means it's water that's been filtered, meaning that supposedly the toxic, the toxic uh, ingredients or the toxic materials have been screened out. The filters can't get it all out though, bro. They can't get it all out. They can't get it all out. Filtered water is just that. So in terms of a nutritional value, there's none there. You know, um, distilled water, is better if you're going to be drinking filtered water but the distilled water you're only going to drink in the a.m. or with your tea you see so again we want to be specific because we want to drink ph water so that our body can do what it needs to do here okay and that water can get into those cells you see okay if you're distilled in the p.m. what happens real quick you're just talking about more cleansing, you know, and if you're going to regulate and balance yourself out, you want to start that cleansing process in the morning. Most people will do distilled water with liver juice, just to activate that liver, activate that cleansing process every day. Your body, how many times should we detox? How should we detox? How many times should we detox? You see what I'm saying? You said once a year? Twice a year. Yeah, it's seasonal, at least once a season, okay? That's, the answer is, we do it every day. Without us even having to do anything, our body is built like that. So when we do a detox process, we're only helping the body do what it normally does. So that it ain't doing too well. Because we might have too much toxins in the body, can't get it all out. Or our body's clogged up and can't get it all out. So distilled water could be part of that regimen? Absolutely. I didn't know you could drink distilled water. Yeah, yeah, distilled water. When I sit with my clients, I tell them to do distilled water in the morning, alkaline water during the day, and then they can brush it off with some spring water. Because there's money always involved when you talk about alkaline water, it's a few pennies more. So I usually tell my clients, distilled water in the morning, your glass, lemon juice, distilled water, I'm going yeah, fresh lemon juice, distilled water, you drink that, and that activates the system, wakes the system up, gets the liver activated, gets the digestive tract activated, helps to flush out the toxins that was laying in the liver all night. Because when you're sleeping at night, all of the blood goes to your liver with the exception of just a little bit that keeps you going. So all night long, the liver is being soaked with whatever was in your blood. So if it was the bubble gums, you got all that sugar in your blood. If it was a, 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 a 40, you got all that 40 up in your blood. It was a 50, you got all the fish in your blood. <laughs> all that stuff in there. How much, you said, you said 20, um... 20, for every 20 pounds of body weight? Yeah, but how, how long? Like 24 hours, 12 hours, all day, once a day, what? 24 hours. What are you talking about? How often do you drink the water? All day, four hours, two hours, what? No, no, no. All during the course of the day. During the course of the day, you want to get in five glasses, eight glasses, whatever it is compared to your body weight. Okay. You know, and a lot of times people have a problem with that, trying to get all of that water in, in their mind. You know what I'm saying? So if you're sipping it all day, 
but it's not a conscious effort. So people don't understand the importance of the water we put our shoes on. The water is just as important as the shoes. The water is just as important as your pants. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But people don't look at it like that. So we tell people to get a liter and just carry that around with you. It's hard for people to drink this water because it's not embedded in them. I struggle with it just like everybody else does. You know, I do pretty good, you know, because I'm conscious about it. But I don't do every day. I don't get my eight, out, eight glasses of water in. I'm going to get six or seven, but I might miss one. You know, but if I'm doing it on a regular basis, I'm okay. And if I'm doing my lemon and distilled in the morning, I'm doing my alkaline in the day, and I got my spring water back, I'm going to be okay. You know when you don't drink enough water when you're laying in the bed at night and you do that stretch and you get that cramp? That means no water. That what that mean. When you be laying there, you make that turn around 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning, you get that, and you try to stretch every day, ah! <laughs> you know, you roll up out the bed, try to put that foot on the floor, try to stretch it out. Y'all see, I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you see? But that's what happens at night. If you're not drinking the water, your muscles will cramp up on you. You know, and that's important to recognize that. So, malnutrition is very, very important, you know, in terms of building the body, in terms of this right here, you know, energy. You got to have nutritive food, you know, to rebuild the body. You have to have food that has all of those minerals and nutrients that are components of building blocks or rebuilding, you know, the body. Food to help to heal. This food, if I have uh, uh, asthma, what kinds of foods can I eat to help deal with that asthma? If I have a liver condition, you know, I got hepatitis or jaundice or something going on with my liver, what kinds of foods can I eat to deal with that? All your nightshades for sure, your turnips, uh, rutabaga, rhubarb, uh, parsnips, you know, these are all of the things that you got to dig up out the dirt. You know, these are all liver vegetables. Okay, so an individual has any kind of liver condition. So I need some parsnips, rhubarb, rutabaga, turnips, radishes, you know, that whole nightshade family that works on detoxifying, cleansing, and rebuilding the liver, okay? Uh, this hepatitis that they have out now is kind of tough, but way back in the day, you know, when they had the, that first strand of hepatitis out, that diet would flip that whole thing around for individuals. Okay, it flips it now. At the same time, there's some other things you have to do because the strands of hepatitis are a little bit more stronger um, than they were, uh, more viral than they were back in the day. So with the liver, again, those nightshades, nightshade vegetables are what they call it. These are all the ones that what grow at night. <laughs> you know, that's when they grow at night. When the sun go down, they down, they're growing. You know, the sun come up, shut them down. <laughs> you know, they just wait, I'm gonna wait till the sun go down. Okay, so it's important to recognize that we have to eat those kinds of food. Sleep deprivation. Now here I am, dehydrated, I'm not drinking no water. Here I am, malnutrition, I'm eating at Crackdowns and Murder King and Taco Hell and you know, the, the Chinese joint and you know, I see they still got churches up here. <laughs> you know, they ran churches out of DC. I think it might be one down there. You know, they ran them up out of there. K K KFC, killing families and children, and ran everybody up out of there. <laughs> the, the old colonel. He a general now, probably. You know? <laughs> he a general of killing people. You know, pizza. Ooh, man. Pizza hut. You understand? Yeah, the Pizza Hut. Oh my God. Uh, and, 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 and what's my man Jared? What's the boy Jared from uh, Subway? You know, Jared, he lost about 900 pounds eating at Subway. And I say he was a lie because you was exercising, you had a trainer, you had your herbs, all that money you was making. You know, that's why Magic Johnson running around here, you know, HIV negative. Because he had the money to be able to do what he needed to do and use natural healing concepts. He's not telling people that. I want y'all to think with the drugs, the powers to be the total. Don't go around telling people, man, they eat some fruit and some vegetables and so forth, they can heal this thing. You know, and that's what he did. You know, no doubt about it. Believe me, family. He came to a program that I was working at back when, when, he, when he first uh, left that out. And he talked a little bit about that. So, here I am, dehydrated, malnutrition, sleep deprivation. Sleep deprivation. Now, y'all know y'all don't sleep. If y'all like me, y'all struggle getting your sleep in. You know, he must hold us to practitioners. We struggle. She's oh, okay. I, I thought she was gonna say not me. I was say, oh, not you. <laughs> but we struggle with it too. Yes. One of the reasons why we struggle because we carry everybody else's stuff with us. 
you know, a lot of times we have to work that out in order to get some sleep. Believe you me. The other day I treated a guy, his knees were all bad. He walked away, my knee was starting to hurt. I was like, oh, I know I'm supposed to need that in there. So you have to actually do something practically. You know, in other words, when I walked out of the room that time, I didn't say I'm leaving. You know, you got to do something. You know, you do something practical, something physical. You make some kind of mind or spiritual statement to leave that stuff. And that my knee was bothering me, I had to actually I had to stick some needles. And I had to actually go ahead and treat myself to, to, to resolve that issue, you know. But that's what happened. So sleep deprivation. We get on average three, five hours on average, on average. That's without children. <laughs> I was going to say without children, you know, three to five hours, you know, and if you're good, you're going to get seven. If you're good, you're going to get seven, you know, anywhere from three. I didn't want to say three to six, because if I say six, that's too much. <laughs> but three to five hours, because those of us who wake up at three o'clock in the morning, okay, some, some of us don't sleep, we toss and turn all night. The only, and this is why these three things are crucial. We told you about the dehydration, why, how that's crucial. We told you about the malnutrition, because you got to be able to rebuild the body, give the body energy, all of those things. Sleep deprivation, let me tell you, to me, this one seems to be almost the most important one. Mm -hmm. The reason being is because of the mere fact that your body cannot heal unless you're sleeping. Unless you're meditating. <clears throat> unless you are loving, uh, unless you are resting, unless you are laughing, these are all what? Relaxing states. This is all, these are all times where the body ain't got to do nothing at ease. It ain't got to exert nothing. Like right now, I'm not here. I'm working right now. I'm not right now. My body's not here. One of the things that, that has all those things have in common is not thinking. You're not in that. Oh, I gotta do this. I gotta do that. I gotta do that. And I didn't get this done. I didn't do that. Then. All those things have that in common. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. What's loving? A warm fuzzy. You know. So <laughs> when, when I see when I see my sister Zola and I see my brother. Uh, 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 um, Basile. Basile, when I see Basile, or I see my brother here, I see my brother, I see Tyson, you know, when I came in, we, we hug. Those few seconds is nothing but positive, relaxed energy, and dig this, exchange. All right. mm -hmm. So when I stepped back from Tyson when I came in today, and I stepped back from him, I didn't uh, step back with a bunch of nonsense, I stepped back with some good energy. And when he walked back that way, he stepped back with some good energy. So as I'm talking with you right now, my energy is coming out and it's coming right here. Bam. Yours is coming all the way out and it's coming right here. Bam. They meet it. Bam. What happens right here determines what we get back. So when the brother come and they hug you and they give you that side thing, what's up, baby? You ain't got the whole thing. There's something happening, but you ain't got the whole thing. And ain't nothing going on with you. Something going on with them. So when you walk away, if you do have your balance, ain't nothing going to be taken from you unless you take it from that person. But if you're clear, you're like, oh, wow, what's that? Okay, all right, I love you anyway, brother. You know, you roll on the way. But outside of that, you're like, hey, what's that? Now you thinking, like she sister just says, all up in that head. Now you thinking like they think. <clears throat> what's this? Huh? Wow, something's wrong with him. Now you, your energy off. I was going to say, that was, that's a good analogy, and that's something that I'm dealing with. Um, not, I don't want to say necessarily uh, use the title as love, but like, okay, I, I work in a hospital, mm. and I think a lot of people are robotic, like the doctors or people, because like, say for instance, if we're walking down the hallway, um, doctors don't speak. It's and on a way. daily basis, or, you know, some nurses too, but on a daily basis, right? Like here, we got this narrow hallway and I'm walking this way and they're walking this way. And when I first started, of course, I'm like, you know, we're in this narrow hallway, nobody else is here, hello. And they will look at you right in your face and still don't speak. Yeah, absolutely. And then absolutely. the next day is the same thing. It's like, how can Incredible. you see me every day and not speak? Incredible. 
Incredible. So, um, I'm starting to develop that, but I think it's because I feel like, um, I don't want to call it robotic, but I'm getting used to the system, so to speak. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So, like, you know, you see you, you, somebody... You beginning to accept it? Well, I don't accept it. I don't. But I know that it's point, like, hi, 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 and then it's just like, they're looking at you. <laughs> like, looking at you, and you can literally speak right at them, and they look at you dead in right. your eye and So what does that do to your spirit? You see what I'm saying? In the beginning, I feel not hardened, but, well maybe hardened by now because like you can't see this doctor as a year ago by and he still has not spoken mm -hmm, yet mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. he's still walking down the same hallway mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right so you don't want to put no energy into it which is what we talk about you know you do your thing consistently good morning sir and you continue to give that to them so you said be consistent with that huh you, you're saying that i should continue to be consistent with good morning or hello you or should i should yeah i mean if you don't how you gonna feel <laughs> now I feel like I just got to the point where whatever I don't And that's anymore. not a good feeling, correct? That's not positive. You don't want to do nothing positive. Mama, you was about to say? That's a lack of human connection. Yeah. That's trained out of It's people. robotic to it's, the hospital. You just said it's it, robotic. Trained, she said trained. It's trained out of yeah. people. It's trained out of people. Yeah. Yeah. I it's thought maybe they went to school for it. I, I, I'm wondering like, <laughs> if it's something that doctors do in school. Yes. They got a lot of um, yes. non-naturopathic um, thinking going on. So it's right. all, all machinations. No. Right they're, they're thinking no. drugs for this, to That's drugs it. for that. So a lot's going on. And when yeah. you go, you, you have a problem. They're gonna go. They're gonna leave the room where you have it. They're gonna go to their office, look up the book, the technical yeah. terms. They so are. There's, there's a lot going yeah. on that's of uh, outside the order, the way the Earth operates. Mm -hmm. So they are trained like that. Yes, they are trained like that. Separate yourself from the client because you can get emotionally attached. Okay, when I first started doing acupuncture back in 78, 79, 80, lost our first, I lost my first client. I didn't lose them. They didn't, they didn't continue to do what they were supposed to do. And then I heard a year later, so-and-so passed. Call me up. I said I could have did. I beat myself up for months because I just started working in it. So I felt like it was my fault. And it wasn't. So I had to hurry up and learn how to get over that. It took me about five years of doing acupuncture to get over that. The first year I didn't get over it. The second year I didn't get over it. Continue to work. Continue to work on it though. Had to work on it because like my sister said, we trained. You know, it's indoctrinated. My mom is a retired nurse. My grandmama's a retired nurse. So I grew up in a medical household. But my mother used peppermint oils and unmade cough syrup out of onions. And when we had fever, she cut the onions and put them in our socks and under our arms. And she made plasters. And, you know, my favorite thing was peppermint tea. She'd get the, the hot water and boil it. And we was getting it out the sink. Man. Get the hot water and boil it. And put a drop of peppermint in there and a couple of teaspoons of that domino sugar. And we was happy because of the peppermint it just soothed us and cooked. I didn't know, you know, what it was doing, but we, we like the taste of it, you know, kind of thing. So it's important to recognize that the body can only heal when it's in a relaxed state or a state of at ease, when we're at ease. Therefore, the cells can proliferate. They can do what they want to do because the body's not what? Tight. You know, so like right now as I'm doing this, I'm shutting my system down right now as we speak. Ain't no circulation right here. It ain't going up to the arm. It ain't getting to my brain. I done shut all that off. Let me stop. <laughs> you see? So that's important. So when I get angry, you know, anxious, anxiety, you know, fear, you know, whatever. You know what I'm saying? These things can constrict the body and they call it stress. So when we think about that word stress, I say, I ask people, I say, what is stress? Oh, you know, my job is stressful. My husband, my wife, my children, you know, the bills that I got. The issue becomes, I say to them, if we look up the word stress in the dictionary, with a definition say stress, your wife, your job, your husband, your children. <laughs> Webster ain't there like that, okay? He's not there like that. But what is constriction? Constriction is a physical, a physical tightening up, a physical constriction of the body. And when the body tightens up, 
everything tightens up. Your circulation, okay, the nervous system, your senses, everything will tighten up. The circulation throughout the whole body, your blood, everything will tighten up. Your brain, you know, in terms of your thinking processes, because you cannot do this and think clearly at the same time, you know. Um, huh? Your Bruce Lee? What do you say? What about Bruce Lee? Unless you're Bruce Lee. A lecture? Unless. Unless you're Bruce Lee. Oh, okay. Yeah, Bruce could do some fantabulous things. Okay. <laughs> so it's important to be able to recognize how to work around that. You cannot have, check this out, a negative thought and a positive thought in the same space. It did. It ain't happening. So now what we know then is that a positive statement, a positive thought, a positive emotion, a positive feeling is much more powerful than a negative one. A hundred times more powerful than a negative one. You can move some stuff. You know, you can get some things done, you know, with that. But you cannot have them in the same space. They won't exist. Therefore, if we walk down the hallway and they're not speaking, you got one or two choices. Either you're going to be in a positive state or you're going to be in a negative. If that person takes you out of that positive state in terms of your training and your upbringing, your protocol and your mannerism to speak to any and everybody as we're walking past them, that's how we were raised. That's a nicety. As my mom used to call me, that's a nicety. That's being nice. That's a nicety. Serve that nicety up on the plate. You know, what are you talking about, So that's a nicety, you know, speaking to everybody. And of course, if anybody's been down south, you just all day. Yes. Oh. Exactly. You know, you're like, I don't know them, but, <laughs> you know, Even and they smiling. And that's what wow. I'm used to. Yeah, absolutely. Even in the car, absolutely. Pay. Yeah, all of that. In the car. You, you, in I the mean, market, you, everybody, yeah, everybody yeah. speaks like that. So again, that's this, once again. So if that's happening, hey, good feeling. Right through my body. And if I'm doing that all day, that hey. explains why. Oh, baby, I'm pumped up. At the end of the day, you're feeling good. You, you see what I'm saying? And there's a video called The Secret, and it says if you stub your toe in the morning and you get mad about that and you carry that anger, it's going to go to the next thing. Then you go in the kitchen, you're going to drop the pot on your on your toe, and you go in the, and your sisters put the stocking on and get a snag run in it. You know, brothers put their socks on and figure out, oh, you got two Mitch Macs here. You know, different things will happen because you're not focused and it's taking you out of your normal uh, state of balance. And I know it's getting close to cutoff time. Let me see if there's any questions, anything uh, that people may want me to address before we wrap it up at the end of the night. We're at about 9.30 now almost. Oh, 9.20. Yep, we got about 10 minutes left. Yeah. Yeah. About 10 Anybody got any questions or anything they'd like to add? Yes, ma'am. Uh, what about the malnutrition? A lot of folks want to use the supplements. What you take on that? Absolutely. The supplements. I got a take on that. I'm with my sister. I think supplements are great. But it's important to recognize that supplements are just that, supplements. So if that's that, what's the optimal process? The optimal process has got to be the foods that you're eating, the diet. So yes, supplements are great. I take supplements. You know, you come into my house and right beside my computer is two little uh, uh, tea, uh, night tea table tray, night trays, two of them. And I got like 30, 40 different vitamins, herbs, and stuff like that. And my clients come in, you take all that, doc? I said, yeah, at different points in time. You know, I said the whole issue has to do with a game, spirit, body, mind, and my environment. So I'm on my computer, and I'm like, oh, man, I forgot to take my B-complex. Boom. Because I got in liquid. I try to get as many liquid drops as I can. Because we be tardy. You know, you got to get liquid vitamin C, liquid B complex, liquid multivitamin, liquid calcium magnesium for the bones. You know what I'm saying? All of this stuff to get your little tinctures, your little eye drop tinctures, you know, for your heart and for your liver and your kidney. You get all these different herbs because you got to work on those processes. So the environment, again, is so uh, crucial uh, in this process. So the supplements are just that. They supplement what it is that you're supposed to do ongoingly. Okay, so when we talk about raw foods, fresh foods, <laughs> this word raw, we was talking about it earlier, just kind of throws people off. But yeah, fresh foods, raw foods, has in it all of your nutrients, all your vitamins, okay, all of your enzymes, 
you know, the alkalinity is in all of your vegetables, you know, etc. And you put that in your body, if you're eating like that regularly on a regular basis, your body is going to take care of itself and do what it needs to do. But, I'm sorry, not but, and because we are in this society, this system, as my sister was talking about earlier, a lot of stress, a lot of stuff that we got to deal with on a daily basis, we're constantly being bombarded. Because of that, there has to be some kind of supportive measures. You know, so we do some crystals and do some crystal clearing. You know, we do some meditation, we do some Reiki, we do some acupuncture. You know, we do some uh, water with lemon juice. We do some liquid vitamin C. We do, you know, we get some seaweed and we eat some seaweed. And, you know, we go over here and, you know, we eat a little bit of ginseng root or we over here and we get some uh, moringa seeds or, you know, whatever the case may be. But it's what? Lifestyle. That's the key. Lifestyle. So if your lifestyle is one that says, I'm going to eat what's right, when you come in my house, ain't nothing going to be in there but what's right. Doc, what you got to eat? Uh, we got some stuff. Man, he ain't got no junk in there, man. Don't ask him, man. He ain't got nothing in there we can eat. Oh, yes, I do. Everything in here you can eat. You see that? He ain't got nothing in there we can eat. Oh, yes, I do. Every Again, the conditioning. You know, and these are clients that come in. You know, when I'm working with a client, the first half an hour, I have to debate with them about the milk, the pork, you know, and different other things, wheat bread. There's a whole debate about wheat bread with them now. They, but Baba, I thought the wheat bread was good. Yeah, but it creates so much mucus and phlegm in the body. That's the whole bread. The wheat bread wheat is the bread. salt and yeast and trash in it. Wheat clear. You know, it's got nothing but garbage in there. You know, and then how you gonna get a piece of wheat bread and you grab the piece of bread, right? You grab a piece of wheat bread if you let it go and do like that. <laughs> I'm just saying, you get a piece of bread and you hold it at the edge, it's going to do like that. Now, when I'm we were coming up... in three days. Yeah, <laughs> that too. Green. When we were coming up, we'd take a piece of white bread. You know how you take it and roll it up like a hot dog and you eat it? Yes. We would do that, but we would also roll it up, go in the house, make sure mom ain't there, turn the oven on. We'd sprinkle some sugar on it and put it in the thing and bake us a, a donut. With that saying, you know how soft that thing is? You can rebake that bread. Come on, y'all. <laughs> we grew up eating that. <laughs> you know, but that's the concept. So think about what that's doing inside of the body. Okay, those people who like dairy and cheese. When you get your pizza, first slice come off, stringy cheese, you whip it, wrapping it, trying to catch it. <laughs> String cheese, <laughs> just roll it. It's nice and melty. You whip it, and you fold that bad boy. You tear that thing up, then you go back to get the next slice, you got to tear it off. Because the cheese then what? Got hard. Because it ain't what? Hot no more. So it ain't melted. Oh, your body's hot enough to keep it melted. So when you eat that piece of pizza, that second piece, first of all, the first piece then hardened up because your body ain't hot enough to keep the cheese melted. So when you get yeah, very scary, especially the second, third, and fourth slice, if you're greedy on that day, you know what I'm saying? You get them, all that cheese, and it just curls up in your system <clears throat> and sits there. Now all of a sudden we got gas, we pooping mm -hmm. from the end and the mouth. We burp, burp. That's the same thing. That's gas coming out that way, you know, because we got all this cheese and acid fermenting in the body. You know what I'm saying? All of this stuff that's going on in there. And we enjoy. My son came in the house last week. Come up, uh, boy. You must have had you another one in peace. Yeah, boy. I had a little, had a little piece. I said, go on and get them aloe crystals in there. Next morning he woke up. He was clear. Cause you have to get that stuff out as soon as possible. So when I sneak and I eat some carrot cake, I'm taking me some aloe. <laughs> carrot cake coming out the next morning. I'm not playing with that. You know, and I'm gonna try to find some vegan character if I can, you know, in that sense. But yeah, yeah. Aloe crystals? Gotcha. Aloe crystals? Yeah, the aloe crystals we have in the back, and the aloe crystals, it's an African aloe. I've been taking it for 15 years, and Basile will be handling it up here. He's the one of the distributors up here. But the African aloe is the yellow bitter juice from the aloe plant. This particular aloe is 22 times more powerful than the other 273 species on the planet. Only grows in South Africa. Every herb that's most powerful is from that continent.
cayenne, African cayenne. I mean, we just, you know, I mean, everything that's great comes from that continent, or you India. know, over there. Or India. Yeah, sure, which yeah. is, you know, our second, you know, shape like Africa. Yeah. So that's, that's baby Africa up there. And that's where we went when we left Africa, going up through there, teaching people acupuncture and all those other things that might made our way all the way up to China because in Sri Lanka they got some of the baddest acupuncturists over there. I mean vicious, you know, India, Sri Lanka, you know, Thailand, all of them but you were all the way up to China, you know, down there. Where was Jesus at for eighteen years? He was running around in Africa, down in what they call the Middle East studying. Yep. Because they couldn't find him. And when he came out, he was thirty something years old. He was going up to people and he'd touch him. Boom and because he knew acupuncture points. He knew Reiki. He knew reflexology. He knew how to deal with mind energy. He knew how to deal with emotional mind energy, because it's just another form of, of it. you know, emotional. He knew all of this stuff. He knew how to use his eyes. You know, you have to do it, don't read my lips. No, read my eyes. Bam! Like the vampire. Who? You know? <laughs> Real clear. The crazy dude that rolled up on him. He rise it. Boom! <laughs> Get down it. Hey. Ease them right on up. Why? Because what did he release from his eyes? Spirit. And it was the spirit. Again, you cannot have negative and positive in the same place. He had been away for many years developing that energy. So when he came up against that, in no way could that energy propel him away. So that energy lost because he had developed that spiritual energy for all of them years and came out this gun. Bam! Just just dropping them, just rocking them all over the place. You know, Murray Magdalene, all of them. He just you know, taking care of the business. You know, say, so you, oh, you ain't do no sin, you throw the rock then, dude. You ain't never did no sin, you ain't never done nothing wrong, you throw the rock. You know, and again, using what? Mind. That's called, what do we call that nowadays? Reverse psychology. That's what we call it. reverse psychology. Oh, you want to throw a rock? Okay, here, you throw the rock if you ain't had no sense. What? Back on up. <laughs> ain't no lightning bolt come down and get me. You know, <laughs> real clear. God ain't playing. You know, so these are the things that we need to understand and recognize that these principles about living and spiritual thinking and so forth is what allows us to move forward, you know, so. All right, any other questions? I just want to thank you all so much and thank you all for sticking. You know, we had a great, great group of people here and we will be coming back. Myself and my sister, we're gonna be setting it up again next month, hopefully she'll join me. Uh, and we will be coming back to uh, do some more presentations at this. All right, Can thank we you give Bob, so uh, Dr. Kokai Patterson, uh, Yes, is he products in the back? Can y'all give him a little love so we can take less little less back to DC within the night than he came up with? <laughs> he has some very profound, powerful, natural products that he put together in the back from head to toe, healing the whole body from head to toe. So let, me, let me just say one thing about those herbs. See, again, I've been at this for about 40 years, and folk know Dr. Laila O. Africa. Folk know Queen of Fools, Dick Gregory, all these, these are all the folk that I've been working with for 40 years. So those formulas are as a result of me mentoring under them and learning from them and put those formulas together and they all work. So anybody's got some diabetes, we got some stuff that can slam it. High blood pressure, digestive issues, respiratory issues, allergies and sinus formula, you know, we have that. I have what's called the mailman formula for men. M-A-L-E, man, mailman. <laughs> for the tape, we'll give you your contact information if you yes. have a website or if you have a phone. So, again, we want to uh, thank everyone uh, for coming out. Uh, and just in closing out, uh, there are specific herbal products uh, back there, some cultural products back there, uh, made from some rich woods and stuff from all over the world, and some health products back there. There's a diabetes formula. There's a formula for high blood pressure, there's a formula for respiratory problems, there's a formula for uh, sinuses, I'm sorry, allergies and sinuses, uh, there's a male formula also, uh, there's a liver formula, a kidney formula, specifically for your kidney, you know, etc. back there. We also have African aloe vera. The African aloe vera 
It's something that detoxifies and cleanses the whole body. Uh, those who have problems with pot bellies, it'll shrink that an inch a day, uh, you know, and move all of that garbage out of the body. Uh, detoxifies the liver, uh, takes out inflammation in the body, helps women to regulate their cycles. This is what this aloe bitter crystal can do. The other uh, aloe uh, is the aloe tea, the African aloe tea, that helps to deal with acid buildup, gas, acid reflux in the body. But the key about this tea is that it will stop the acid from returning back into the bloodstream. This is what I'm talking about. When you're detoxing, you have to release the toxins where? Into the system so that you can pee them out, defecate, spit, sweat, whatever ways that your body, the women have a cycle, you know, all of this stuff has to be released, you know, uh, 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 out of the body. By taking those aloe bitter crystals, this process is enhanced. This process is enhanced in terms of going deep into the body and pulling all uh, of those toxins. Is that a daily application or is that? I've been taking those crystals every day for 15 years. I'll be 62 next year. 62? Yes, sir. Hey, like you were 40 something. Thank That's you it. so much. Well, get his name and number. He goes with me <laughs> on all my tours. He goes with me and introduces me from this point. Joe, you don't tell the truth. I, I, I said. <laughs> Yeah, you know, we appreciate you. Thank you so much. You know, thank you so much. But again, but again, those teas, for example, kidneys deal with your hair. We have so many young people, young men losing their hair because of what? They're not drinking the water. They're not dealing with things that will build the kidney. I have a thing back there called metabolizing wheel. And she talked about that root chakra and not having that oomph to go and deal with the issues. That's kidney. No wheel, meaning the opposite. Fear, as she talked about, this fear that will stop you from going. But if the kidneys are reinforced, you're going to find yourself right there dealing with the mix. Dealing with the mix. I had a client come in last week. Brother, held on to so much trauma through the years. Good guy. Just as nice. But behind all that, all of the trauma that he went through, he would just, he'd get home and he'd tell me about how angry he was. I get home and I'm like, I come out, hey, how's that right? You know, you know we got people like that. When I put them needles in this brother, this brother's about six foot two, with about a ball ninety, big brother, ain't no little dude. I threw them needles in this cat, within a half an hour, he started crying and wailing. Started crying and well, this is after the third treatment, you know, because the body relaxed more and more, and he just kept getting open, kept getting open. And by treating specific points to deal with those emotions that I talked about, you know, those emotions that I talked about, what did I do with you? Thanks. Real quick, I'm going to put down these emotions. What did I do with you? Marvel. Can I cuff it? I cuffed it in the marble. Okay. But what I was going to show you was the emotions associated with all of those organs. Okay. And the emotion associated with the kidney is fear. I was so scared, I almost peed on myself. You see the gangster movies, they got a gun in the dude's head and he pin. The adrenals sit right on top of the kidneys. The adrenals deal with fight and flight and fear. You know, the adrenal starts running through the body. So those adrenal glands get to shaking, the kidney, and you got to pee. The lungs deal with sadness and grief. The liver deals with anger, irritability, emotional imbalance, blood, hot-blooded person, liver. So we got the liver. Anger, kidneys, fear, lungs, sadness, and grief. Digestive area, spleen, stomach, so forth, worry. You know, you get that knot in the stomach, you're bubbling up, the butterflies, because you're nervous, you're scared, or you're going through it, you're laying down in bed at night, you're thinking, oh, you're, oh the, the bills, oh, I might get evicted tomorrow, oh, I might lose my job. Oh, all this stuff is happening in your stomach, and it just knots it up, tightens that whole thing up. You see what I'm saying? So those are the issues. So worry affects that. Liver, anger, imbalance, irritability, emotional imbalance. Kidney, fear. Lungs, grief, sadness, and loss. Okay, so the opposite of all of those things are the things that we need to deal with in order to heal those organs. Heart deals with joy and lack thereof. So when I'm doing diagnosis, I do tongue diagnosis, the tip of the tongue represents the heart. And if that tip is fire red and the rest of the tongue is a nice little pink color, you know, not pale or whatever, that person got a lot of heart and emotional issues. That's one of the things that we learned in acupuncture, how to read a person's tongue, how to read six pulses. There's a pulse for each one of your organs. 
So when the doctors come, they do a whole thing and they root, root that. No, I'm gonna get three over here and I'm gonna get three over here. I'm gonna get your liver pulse, your spleen pulse, your kidney pulse, your lung pulse. We're gonna check them. And, and based on what I'm feeling, whether it's a full pulse, soft, can't feel it, whatever, it tells me something about that organ. You know, look at people's faces. And, you know, women is reproductive. And, you know, up at the top of the head is the large intestine and the colon and stuff. On the sides is the liver. So when people say, I got a headache, where is it at? That's the first thing you ask them. The doctors don't care. Take this. You know, I ask them, where is it at? It's on the top of my head. Oh, okay. All right, that's the spleen. So, okay, it's in the back of my neck. Okay, that's bladder stuff going on. It's on the side, that's liver. This is the truth, what I'm saying. That's the liver in the front. It's large intestine. So you know these things, and when people are talking, you're able to give them those bits and pieces of information if you understand what the correlations between different body parts and different things you know, in the body. Okay, so again, we have those products back there. We have a neem oil, which is the oil that Mahatma Gandhi put all over his body. And those people who know Mahatma Gandhi, he just wore one little sheet. When he was over in London in them cold, damp places, never got sick because he did this neem oil all over his body. Believe me, I'm using it on the regular too. You know, so that's the neem oil. We have peppermint oil back there. The peppermint oil opens up the respiratory. You can sprinkle it around the bed at night when you go to sleep or when the children go to sleep. Everybody's just chilled out. You know, it's great in terms of uh, insecticide. And so is the neem oil. It stops the roaches and the bugs and the rats and the rodents and all that stuff. Serious stuff. When you talk about natural processes in terms of what? Spirit, mind, body, environment. So if your environment, you're using all this roach spray and you know, this aerosol, this, and then you're breathing these chemicals in from the cleaning stuff that you're using, etc. You know, it's very, very toxic, you know, to the body. You know, so it's important. So those particular products back there, uh, we have also moringa seeds, okay? And I wanted people to sample the moringa seeds. So let me give a couple of moringa seeds out for everybody. And I want you to check these moringa seeds out. And the moringa seeds, okay? So you just peel the shell on those. Peel the shell. We're all going to eat a couple of them right now. Come on up here and get you some of the moringa, bruh. <laughs> moringa, so pop them seeds, crack them open, or either just throw the whole thing in your mouth. Most people will crack them open. Most people will crack them open. And what, what happens is they'll give you energy, they'll help to tonify the body, okay? They help with digestion, you know, etc. Okay, they help with the digestion, etc. We have that back there on the table in terms of powder, and we have it in terms of seeds and stuff. So by eating these seeds, your energy level becomes totally, totally different, okay? And it really helps with your digestion, helps to tonify the whole body, you know, all that kind of good stuff, okay? And if you taste it, it tastes sweet and bitter. You get that taste in that weed? It just explodes and it just continues and continues. But that's why I like, I like that taste, because it's bitter, but it's also sweet also. But the nutrient in this, there was a gentleman by the name of Dr. Kwaku Andama fifth generation ethnobotanist. He's yes. passed. He's an ancestor now. Yes. Yes. He is responsible for bringing what we know as noni juice over here back in 1992. He's responsible for bringing moringa here in this country. People have not heard of this. He's responsible for bringing moringa back in 1992. He's also responsible for bringing a herb called Tabernathi boga, which is an African herb that if you take it, you leave the physical realm for three days. <laughs> Tabernathi Iboga, I-B-O-G-A. Look it up. It's illegal in this country. But the people with money, they spend 15,000, 10,000, 5,000, go to Europe, get the herb, and go somewhere, and they induce themselves for them three days to deal with their traumas and past stuff and all of that coming out. Everything you went through comes up before you. It took me 15, almost 20 years before I was able to get it and do it myself. I'll share that with you one day because uh, it was a very, very serious uh, experience. You know, when we talk about the spirits. Mr. Dr. Ando from Atlanta, Georgia. Dr. Ando from Atlanta, Georgia, who is now an ancestor, is responsible for bringing noni to America, what we know as noni juice and this moringa and that tabernacle, both noni bad, bad man. man. Known is excellent. You know, it has a lot of nutrients and vitamins and this you know minerals. Sweet. There is no bitter in this. This is sweet. Okay, he, okay. See, see, he's got more sweet. 
He's got more sweets. But you got more. You got both too. Yeah. See, I get three, four different things when I do. I just got intense. You just got the what? Intense. I can't. Just intense. Can't even figure out what. I can't even do the second one. Okay. So give right. you give your contact information one more time. Okay. Contact your information. Number, website, email. Right. Two four zero seven four four two two five six two four zero seven four four two two five six. So you can get in touch with me that way, or you can Google my name, Dr. Kokai Patterson. Website will be up Monday or Tuesday. What's, what's your number again? Two four zero seven four four two two five six. And your name is Dr. Kokai K O K A Y I Patterson. I'll give you one of my cards back there at the table. You have a website or? Website will be up on Monday. Okay, we're revamping the website for the African Holistic Health Association. K O K A Y I. That's correct. Last okay. name Patterson. Can we give Dr. Kukaya Patterson one more black, big black hand, you know? Thank you, Brother Basile. Thank you, Brother. Excellent host. And he will, we will be bringing him back on a regular basis with Queen uh, Zola on a regular basis. Thank y'all very much. Sweet. Right off the board, Mary Sub Stop, Philadelphia, PA. Shot so loud, you would think it was a club spot. African Americans, although we all over the web, we the hood librarians. We ship the prisons too. We reach out and deliver to those that's bitten too, but it's more than a bookstore. You want it, we got it. Mixed taste, DVDs, and culture products. Black and Nobel got our hands in a lot of projects. We welcome all to come build. The energy is positive. And remember, other team is awake and conscious. Come through and experience this place of knowledge. They say they'll put it in a book if they want to hide it from us. But we got them books so you can buy it from us. Something to read while you're on a train or riding the bus. Get your read on, food for thought, get your eat on. Black and Black and Nobel, I buy my books at Black and Nobel. Black and Nobel, I buy my books at Black and Nobel. Black and Nobel, I buy my books at Black and Nobel.